Well, I hope you're ready to install your RV seven-way plug. If you're not ready, hopefully by the end of this video, you will be ready. So let's get all of our stuff. You go grab your plug, grab your wire strippers, your crimpers, and all the rest of the crap you need, and let's get this put on the tongue of this trailer. Well, we had to shut the shop doors to cut down from the noise because everybody and their Aunt Ethel is headed home from the eclipse that we had. So there's a ton of traffic on the road, so we shut the doors. Hopefully the lighting works out. Before we get started, let's talk about some of our components. We're going to be using the Pollock 7-way RV plug that we also use for regular trailer wiring, utility trailer wiring. You can check that video. We'll leave that. But today, 7-way RV wiring. We'll need our 7-way cord. It's got all 7 wires in there. Can you see that? Where's it at? There it is. Maybe, maybe not. And you're not, you don't have to have this, but I am going to install a junction box. This is uh, made by Phoenix. I like this box because that's what our supplier has. So when I order it, they send it to me. You can find a different box. It doesn't have to be this brand out there. But this one does hold up pretty good. I have seen some a little cheaper. There's a few out there. Don't know the brand name on them. They're more of a matte finish. Uh, they don't seem as thick of a plastic. So we have pretty good luck with the Phoenix. So we're going to install this, and I'll tell you the reason why after we attach it to the frame. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get all these components set up so we can get some lights on this trailer. The trailer we're working on today is a project that I've been working on probably forever. Uh, we're slowly but slowly getting it done. You'll see some more videos coming up about it. We're not going to show too much of the trailer today. Um, it is pretty neat to see what the trailer used to look like compared to today. It is a cargo conversion. Um, all those YouTube videos I've been watching, I've gleaned from all those ideas. And I'm going to see if I can make my own monstrosity. Um, so far, I've got uh, the outside pretty much finished, but now we're starting to rough in the wiring on it. So we're going to go ahead, put the junction box and the cord. Um, for my purposes, once I get all this on, I am going to take it all back off because I'm going to paint the frame, but I want to have all of my holes and everything in it um, before I paint it. So I'll take all this back off. You see the old breakaway battery box over here with the seven-way cord. Uh, that's what I had before. All that is coming off. I'm relocating everything because I'm doing something different with the tongue. So that's why I'm going to put my junction box on the center support. It can go anywhere you want. You can put it on the outside. Um, you know, out here, you may get a little road rash on it. Maybe it's a little better in there. I don't know. You can put it on the front of the trailer. It really doesn't matter um, where you put it. But for my purposes, for what I'm doing to this tongue, it's going to work best for me right here so if you're thinking about adding a junction box just do whatever works best for you and if you have to service that junction box make it easily accessible so let's get this mounted and if you open it up it comes with all your hardware so don't lose any of those screws to hold down the lid and the clamps for the wire it also comes with these rubber plugs that I dropped all over the floor. I do see people not install these plugs. Um, it does help keep moisture and um, dirt out. I will tell you, this is not a weather tight box. Um, so if you're needing something weather tight, you may look at a different box on that. This does do pretty well. I have seen some places where it's real sandy um, up in Oklahoma with a lot of red dirt. Sometimes I will see these boxes get a lot of dirt in them. They do pretty good on the tongue here, so that's where I'm going to put mine, so maybe I won't get too much crap in it. They are color-coded. They have white, black, yellow, red, green, brown, and blue that you can utilize those. You do not have to go buy those. It's not going to matter, um, but it does help you identify uh, once you're looking at it, whether you're doing seven-way RV plug or if you're doing a seven-way utility wiring or four-way flat or six-way or anything you're putting on there. So we are going to go by the color. So the first thing we're going to do is mount this to the tongue with some self-tapping screws. And I'll tell you, like I tell my kids, put it on there square. Make it look like you did it on purpose. I'm just going off feel. So if you notice in the box, you have several inlets, one here, one on the top, two on the back. Again, set that up for whatever works best for you. I'm going to have some extra wiring coming in, so I want both of my ports at the back so I can hide my wiring. Then in the front, I'm going to bring in my seven-way. Here will just be plugged. There'll be nothing in that spot. So now we're going to switch over. We're going to go ahead and show you how to wire the cord, what color goes to what, um, get that done. Then we'll come back and reattach it to the junction box. 
And remember to check the description below. We will leave some links in there for some of the products we're using here if that would be helpful to you if you're looking for plug or wiring or a junction box or maybe even some connectors. Thank you for all the comments that you have left. We're getting some uh, not so nice comments. Hey, those are all good. It's good comic relief. So for all y'all snarky people out there, keep being snarky. We love it. For y'all people out there with good comments, keep those up as well. It takes both to make the world go round. So let's get this seven way plug uh, opened up and let's get some wire in it. So we'll get our plug opened up. Remember, do not lose your little screw. You can leave it in there. I usually take ours out. Stick it to a magnet if you've got one of those. Open this up all the way. Just make sure the screw doesn't fall out. With the seven-way cord, it is bigger than six-way, so it is hard to get it inside this. Sometimes um, I also see some guys take this out and put it in if it won't fit. That's fine. This has a pretty good insulation on it. You're not going to damage it, so do whatever works best for you. So let's talk about this. In the video we've done on seven-way plug for utility trader wiring, we don't go off the color code on the back of here because it is for um, RVs. But on this one, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. Can you see any of the lettering on there? It's gonna have green, red, black, blue, white. Um, it's not gonna say yellow. Um, it will have brown. For RV wiring, that is an RV color code. So if your RV is wired standard, this is going to be color for color. So if you pick your brown wire, you're going to put it in the brown location. Green wire, green location, and so on and so on, except for the yellow wire, um, which will go in the center, and that is for reverse. Not all RVs have reverse lights. This one did not have it before because this was technically a cargo trailer, but it will have reverse lights. So that's why I'm going with a seven-way RV plug instead of doing a seven-way utility trailer wiring setup. It will be a seven-way RV wiring setup. So I'm going to get the wire stripped back and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to connect it. I'm going to show you how I'm going to connect it on this one. So bear with me on that and we'll get these stripped back. I like to kind of measure so I can strip off so I don't overstrip it or understrip it. That's about where the wires are going to go in. Uh, put my thumb there. That's where I'm going to make my cut. Remember, only cut through the outer insulation. Even if you got to make a couple of cuts, just kind of score it. Sometimes you can just snap it off not the end of the world if you do nick your wire it's just another place for moisture to get in if you're lucky like me and couldn't find your knife you barred somebody else's and theirs is dull as my grandmother would have said this wouldn't cut hot butter okay so those are all pretty close to the same length your reverse wire in this case which is going to be yellow we're going to want to trim that back to a different length because if you look on here if you trim them all the same, you're going to get into a big old bunch up. And with these being heavier wires and you have one extra wire in here, it's going to be hard to get it into the cover once you do that. So if you were looking here, you can kind of do a guide. I don't know if you can see that, how much, how much um, your yellow wire needs to be trimmed back. Not much. I mean, really just a little bit. And then we'll put that in there. So let's get those stripped back. And you don't have to use these kind of strippers. There's all different kinds out there. So once you get them stripped, you have a couple of choices. You can just twist these up and there's nothing wrong with that. They will hold, put them underneath the screw, tighten it down. And most of the time they will stay put. Your other choice is to solder these. Just putting a small amount of solder will help keep the wire stiffer and will clamp down and then the third option you have is what I'm going to show today. I'm actually going to put an eyelet on the end of each one of these just to help it hold on there a little better since these are thicker wire. Some of the smaller six-way wire is a little better because it's thinner. This is pretty thick. So sometimes when you go to tighten down the little clamp, it will get offset and it won't get a good bite on there and it will try to reject the wire um, in there. I'll always twist these up good and let's get some eyelets. So let, let me say this at this point. I don't have my cover on right now because I haven't cut my cord to length. If you have an existing cable that you're just replacing the end on it, make sure you get the cover back on now. Because if you're like me, when you wire the um, end on there and you don't have this cover, you're gonna get aggravated because you gotta unwire all that stuff. So remember, if you're just replacing the end, go ahead and put your cover on before you even strip the wire back 
For me, I'm gonna cut this to length and once I get it measured out, then I will slip my cover on there. To do what I'm gonna do, you're gonna have to take every little screw out. So that's what we're going to do. So we're gonna take that screw out. This is gonna be boring, so bear with me. The only one we're not gonna take out is the center. So what we're going to do is we're actually gonna put an eyelet on here and tighten that down. There's two ways to do it. If you put the eyelet up like that, I don't know if you can see that, it will bunch up. I like to turn mine down and you can bend it in and just make it a little uh, easier to get your cover on. You will not need to eyelet for the center. You'll just, just twist your wire up and use the screw to clamp that down. So let's go ahead and put all the ends on the wire. You notice this white wire is a larger gauge than a ground wire, so you have to go to a little bigger terminal on that. Okay, all the eyelets are crimped on, and like I said, if you had all that on there, that's going to be tough to get through there, so make sure your cover is on first, unless you're putting a new cord. So we're going to cut this to length. You know, a question I get asked is how long do you cut it? A couple things come into play, especially on our RV. If you're using a weight distribution hitch, you're going to have a longer um, hitch to bumper um, clearance, so you're going to go a little bit longer. Uh, don't make it too short. I always like making mine a little extra long just in case you forget or your, you know, your cord comes out, you drag the end off, so you've got a little bit of a buffer. You know, maybe have an extra six inches so you could wire you a new end on it instead of having to replace the whole cord. You know, in the utility trailer world, that right there is pretty good. That will the bumper. In the weight distribution error, if you have a, a uh, bumper pull, you're gonna have a little bit extra room. Or if you have like a BMW tow and stow, they stick out a little bit farther due to the adjustable hitch. So you're gonna wanna go a little longer. If it's too long, you can wrap it around the jack. Um, you can put a clamp on there. So I like to go a little extra long. So I'm gonna measure mine from my junction box. And when I measure it from the junction box, I'm gonna measure from the back side because that's where the, the last one will terminate. So we don't want to measure from the front because it will be too short for the farthest wire. So I'm just gonna mock it up. My cord is gonna come like this. That is plenty long for me. I am not using a weight distribution hitch. This will give me a little extra room. So like I said, not gonna give a measurement because I don't have one It's different for every uh, unit, different for every setup. So just give yourself a little extra and you will be good. So let's cut this bad boy off and we'll wire the plug on. Then we'll switch angles and go into the junction box. As I said before, sometimes it's hard to get in there depending on the gauge of wire. So you can pop that out. If you have a big gap in there, it can be replaced strictly up to you. So you can see how tight that is on there. Another thing you could do, you can put a little soapy water on there that will help slide that over. Um, I'm gonna grab some soapy water and we'll see if we can get that dude to slide up. Let's spray a little soapy water and see if we can slide this back up because I do want to use it. Just don't use WD-40 for spray lubricant. Use soapy water. On our soapy water, we put just a little bit of rubbing alcohol in it. So it'll help it evaporate off a little quicker. So off camera with a little bit of uh, persuasion, a lot of cussing, we're able to get that back on. So like I said earlier, if you're just replacing the end, you don't have to slide that all the way on. Um, if you do put a little soapy water in there, you can make it. So we're gonna start with the center pin, which will be for your reverse lights. Get that dude tighten down. Then we'll move on with the ground. If you have a magnetic tip screwdriver and you don't have brass screws, that will help. I find if I stick my tongue out just right, it helps a lot. I don't know about you. Next color is going to be blue. And something I bet you didn't notice on that yellow wire is me cutting the eyelet off of it because I put it on there like a dummy. Uh, but that is one good thing about editing. We can sh not show any of our mistakes. So don't put your eyelet on the yellow wire or you will have to cut it off. Last but not least, the old red wire Go ahead and check your tightness. Do you want me to stick your tongue out just a little bit more? That helps tighten them up. Okay, now let's see if we can get our cover back on. Let me 
you know, make sure it goes in flush. Sometimes if you have too much wire in there, it will try to kick this bottom part out. So just work it, just don't pull on this too hard. Just kind of just manipulate it as little as possible. Then find your small screw. And then put your rear clamp in place. Don't put it upside down, it will make it hard to screw in. Before you clamp it down, just check it once again. Make sure you're good to go. And you can't over tighten this and crack it just like the front screw. It just needs to be snugged up, flush. So that's the front. You're good. Now we're going to turn around. We're going to strip the back end of it, put some eyelets on and wire it into our junction box. Now we're going to strip all of our ends so we can put it in the junction box. put your grommet on that way you got a good seal on your wire now in the junction box I don't know if you can see it in there or not but there is a clamp um, it does come with a little clamp that goes on there those work okay ish but they're usually only on one end this end does not have one I usually don't use them because we put a good rubber coated clamp um, to secure it to the frame uh, because if the wire gets pulled out it if you just have that it's gonna rip the junction bar the junction box apart with this, sometimes it will save the junction box, sometimes it won't. So put that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my clamp. And we can start putting our wires. If you noticed on here, I had to use the ratchet to get some of these nuts off. That's not always the case. We were just lucky enough that whoever's job it was to put the paint to ID the ends of the stud, probably their last day there, and they just decided they'd put all the paint on. So it made it tough on us, but a lot of times you can just take them off with your fingers. This would be the time to tighten everything down and clean up your wires. Try to make your wires look nice and neat. Like I said, make it look like you did it on purpose. Then you can put your final um, plugs in. I'm going to show that. I'm leaving these loose today because I still have all of my roughing wire uh, to come in. I am going to tighten them down some just so the nut doesn't back off while I'm pulling this in and out of the shop pretending like I'm working on it. Like I said, I've been working on this for way longer than I'd like to admit on camera. When you go to put the wires in, just don't, don't get them pinched um, in here uh, when your cover goes back on. So I'm going to go ahead and show the cover on. because I'm gonna leave it on because it's going back out in the weather. So then we put our plugs in. I would say it is normal to buy a junction box and it not have the plugs in it. So if you order one and it doesn't have the plugs in it, you're gonna have to send it back. It is not normal to get twice as many plugs in. So you know what this means? The next box we have is missing all four of its plugs because they put all eight of them in this one. That is that is uh, not normal. Um, usually you just lose the plugs. So I'm gonna stick these back in here to put my cap on. Just be sure the lid is setting down all the way in this little channel and don't over tighten it when you put it down. 
because it will crack. And then you're gonna be mad. And that is that. Now you can go plug it in to your truck and see how good you've done. If none of your lights come on, then you got something wrong, probably your ground wire. If your right turn blinks and still your left turn, you got something wrong, you got your wires crossed. Sometimes I get my wires crossed, sometimes I forget to do little things, and luckily we can edit it out. If you make that mistake, it's no big deal, just fix it. Worst case scenario, I might have a blowed fuse on the truck, uh, but hopefully that helps you understand the RV wiring. I'm gonna try to leave um, a picture or a link, however we can get it on here, that shows the color code. Um, haven't really got a good one that shows up really well, so I will get that done, even if I have to hand draw one with some Crayola, um, just so we can see it. With that being said, we're gonna finish this video up, give you a little sneak peek of the trailer. So this trailer, when I took it in, was all white with a bunch of logos. It was pretty ragged out, had a hard life, no windows. We've put all that on. We've changed the door location. We put the door in the rear. Let's take a little look on the inside and see what we're gonna do in here. Just kidding, you have to see that later on.